Welcome to the BTX video training on the setup and use of the Hybrimmune system. The Hybrimmune system comprises four components. The Hybrimmune waveform generator, the user interface software, the large volume coaxial chambers, and the low conductivity cytofusion medium in which the electrofusion takes place. A computer is required for the application software, but is not included in the system. There are two connections made with this cable assembly. Connect the SHV type coaxial plug to the jack labeled waveform out. Then connect the RCA type phono plug to the jack labeled chamber interlock. Generally, this cable only needs to be connected at the time that a chamber is to be used. Next, connect the serial cable between the D subminiature 9 position DB9 connector labeled computer control on the back of the unit and a serial port on the computer. This is the communication link between the microprocessor within the waveform generator and the computer. It is a standard RS-232 serial communication. If only USB ports are available on the computer, then a USB to serial converter will be necessary. See section 4.7.1 in the Hybrimmune user's manual for more information. Finally, plug the line mains power cord into the power input receptacle labeled line mains in. Plug the other end into an outlet supplying suitable electric power. Turn the unit on. The Hybrimmune Waveform Generator Interface software must be installed on a local computer with these minimum specifications. Windows 98 or higher, 2 MB free disk space, and at least one RS-232 serial port. If only a USB port exists, then the USB to serial adapter will be required and should be installed first. If the software needs to be installed, use the following procedure. Close all other programs and insert the CD-ROM. Click Start from the Windows lower menu bar. Select Run, which will display a dialog box. Type bracket CD-ROM drive designation bracket colon slash setup. Then click OK. The setup program will begin. Once setup is complete, the completing the Hybermune interface setup wizard will appear. Click Finish. The BTX Hybermune interface desktop icon is now set on the user's desktop. Click on the icon to open the Hybermune interface. See the Hybermune user's manual for the default installation directory. The opening screen is divided into four areas within the main window. The title bar and pull down menus on the top, the tool buttons on the left, the control panel for each operating mode in the center, and the status area on the right. When the electrofusion chamber cable is not attached to the system, the chamber window will display not connected. As a safety feature, the high voltage power supply cannot be enabled and protocols cannot be run while the system is in this state. However, protocols can be programmed and saved in this state. The electroporation mode control panel area in the center of the screen is where the pulse protocol parameters are set, edited, and reviewed. Group ID displays the group number where characteristics are shown in the rest of the control panel area. Pre-sign, beginning voltage, duration in seconds, frequency in megahertz, end voltage, ramp K, non-linear ramp constant, pulse amplitude, voltage of the electroporation fusion pulse, duration, length of the pulse, pulses, number of pulses to deliver, interval, delay between the start of each pulse, post-sign, beginning voltage, duration in seconds, frequency in megahertz, end voltage, ramp K, nonlinear ramp constant. Group list displays the list of groups in the current protocol. The groups will be executed in the order displayed. There are three buttons to control the list. Add or Alt A, used to add a group to the list. Replace or Alt P, used to change data within a group. Changes made to values within a group will not take effect until replace has been selected. If a pulse parameter is changed, but not replaced, an error dialog box will appear if the user tries to run the protocol. The user will be prompted to replace the values first. Remove, or Alt-M, deletes a group. If a group is deleted, the group number below the deleted group, if any, are renumbered accordingly. Turn on the power rocker switch located on the upper left corner of the back panel. The rocker switch power, chamber connected, and charging power supply on LEDs should illuminate. Run protocol on computer. On the Hybermune, the process status should display process running when the protocol is running. 
On the relative load indicator, a few bars should light up green for about 15 seconds because the 40 volt sine wave is being applied. It will increase in bars because of the 70 volt sine wave for about 20 seconds. During the entire run, it is normal to see the bars increase and decrease. It is not typical to see the bars go into the red. If this occurs, it is because there are too many ions present in the sample. See section 4-8 of the Hyperimmune User's Manual for more information. To program a two-step electrofusion, set the beginning pre sign voltage to 40 volts and the end voltage to 40 volts, a pulse duration of 15 seconds and a frequency of 0.8 MHz. Set the high voltage pulse to zero and the post sign to zero. Go over to the group list and click Add. Group 1 is added. Program the second group by setting the pre-signed beginning voltage to 70 volts and the pre-signed end voltage to 70 volts with a pulse duration of 20 seconds. Set the high voltage pulse to 800 volts, a pulse duration of 40 microseconds with a pulse number of 1. Set the post sign voltage to 5 volts with a pulse duration of 30 seconds and a frequency of 0.8 MHz. Then click Add under Group List to add these settings as Group 2. The protocol works on a stack. It will execute group 1 first, then group 2. To save the protocol, click on the disk icon and the Save As window will pop up and prompt you to name the protocol and save in the protocol folder. Then click Save. To retrieve that protocol in the future, click on the folder icon, select the protocol, then click Open and the protocol will open in the Hypermune screen. After the mouse is euthanized, place the mouse on its back. Spray down the surgical area with 70% ethanol. Using sterile surgical forceps and scissors, grab the skin around the area to be dissected with the forceps and make an incision in the muscle wall of the abdomen. Locate the spleen and remove. Place the spleen into tissue culture media. Pour off the excess media. Pour the spleen or spleens into a sterile selector and collect the spleens on the surface. Inject the spleens with approximately 500 microliters of cytofusion medium. Macerate the spleen using the glass pestle by breaking it up and express it through the screen. Flush the cells off of the pestle and through the screen with 4 or 5 milliliters of media. Collect it with a sterile transfer pipette and transfer to a 50 milliliter conical tube. Rinse the collection plate once more with media to retrieve any residual cells left on the plate. Collect with a transfer pipette and transfer into a conical tube containing the cells. Take the 50 milliliter conical tube containing about 15 milliliters of cell suspension and add 5 milliliters of phycal histopac solution at room temperature by placing the transfer pipette at the bottom of the conical tube and slowly pipette the phycal histopac solution in suspension without forming any bubbles. You should see a layer like this. Set the centrifuge to 200 G at room temperature for 30 minutes. After cells have been centrifuged, using a sterile transfer pipette, insert the tip until it touches the buffy coat layer containing the B cells. Transfer the cells to a new conical tube. Bring up to 50 milliliters with media and centrifuge at 400 G for 7 minutes at room temperature. After centrifugation, you should see a pellet. Pour off the supernatant and break up the pellet by flicking the tube gently. To wash the cells, add about 30 milliliters of cytofusion media and centrifuge at 400 G for 7 minutes at room temperature. Repeat twice. Take 90 microliters of Tripan Blue and pipette into a micro centrifuge tube. Resuspend the cells by flicking the pellet gently. Take a 10 microliter sample of cells and mix with the Tripan Blue by gently flicking the tube. Add 10 microliters of the sample to a hematocytometer and view cells under a microscope. Tripan Blue stains dead cells. Dead cells will be blue, live cells will be white. Count live cells and perform a calculation to determine cell density. 
Mix the appropriate number of myeloma cells with the B cells and dilute at a final concentration of 1 times 10 to the 7th cells per milliliter. Carefully pipette the resuspended cells into the chamber. Add 2 milliliters of cells to the 2 milliliter chamber or up to 9 milliliters of cells to the 9 milliliter chamber. The fusion should be performed within 30 seconds after adding cells to the chamber because of settling. Connect the chamber to the Hibramune chamber connection cable and move the chamber to a microscope if using the 2 milliliter chamber for optimization. Run the Hibramune protocol, view the cell alignment to verify fusion. Allow the cells to rest 5 minutes undisturbed post fusion. Harvest cells from the chamber using a sterile disposable transfer pipette. Flush chamber with culture medium to remove cells that have settled to the bottom. Add cells to 50 milliliter conical tube and fill tube to the 40 milliliter mark with complete culture medium. Allow cells to rest for an additional 25 minutes. Dilute the cells to an appropriate volume for plating. The cells can be immediately plated and cultured without washing. It is helpful to analyze the cells immediately after the fusion to determine if there is a problem with the fusion itself. A simple analysis is to use a cytospin to place cells on a slide and stain the cells with a Wright's Guillemza stain. Assemble the cytospin apparatus by fitting the glass slide in with a double cytospin funnel. Close the apparatus, make a second one as a balance. To prepare a slide of fused cells, dilute a small aliquot of fused cells, one to two in media. Allow the cells to rest for 30 minutes. Take 100 microliters of fused cells and pipette into the cytospin funnel. Repeat for the other side using 100 microliters. Place cytospin slides into the cytospin. Set to 350 RPM for 2 minutes. After cytospin is complete, allow the slide to air dry for a few minutes, then dunk the entire slide into a fresh 95% ethanol and hold for about 5 seconds. Allow the slide to air dry, then place the slide in Wright's Giemza stain for one minute. Then dunk the slide up and down in a beaker of DI water to remove most of the stain. In a second beaker of clean DI water, dunk the slide up and down until the precipitates of the stain are no longer on the slide. Rest the slide on a clean paper towel and allow to air dry. View under a microscope using an oil immersion lens. Count the percentage of the cells with two or more nuclei. Chamber cleaning is necessary to remove biological contaminants and ions. The electrofusion process is sensitive to the presence of ions. Clean chambers are essential to prevent excess ion contamination. The following cleaning process is recommended. Immediately after use, rinse the chamber in reagent grade water. Fill the chamber with 4% sodium hydroxide and soak for 5 minutes. Empty the chamber and rinse in reagent grade water for 10 seconds. Repeat rinse 10 times. Rinse once in 70% ethanol. Air dry under a sterile hood. To chemically sterilize, fill chamber with 4% sodium hydroxide and ensure that it is filled to the top of the electrodes. Allow to soak for 10 minutes. Empty chamber and fill with 70% isopropanol or ethanol and soak for 10 minutes. Empty chamber and fill chamber with spore cleanse. Soak 10 minutes. Rinse thoroughly in sterile reagent grade water. Alternatively, the chambers can be gas sterilized. Do not autoclave the chambers. This concludes the setup and video training for the Hibramune system.